In today's video, we're going to be removing the EGR system, the secondary vacuum pump, off of an E46 M54 engine. Hey everybody and welcome back to Tens of Motorsports. And odds are you've heard of removing these systems, problems you have with keeping them, how much they cost to keep up kept, and what it takes to get rid of them completely and reflash your ECU. But before we do, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, like if you enjoy this type of content and share with all of your friends. This channel does have a corresponding Instagram. We do giveaways and we post a lot of extra content over on Instagram, Tenza underscore motorsports. Make sure you're following us on there to be kept up to date on our projects and to be entered into any of our giveaways. That's all you have to do is just follow us. We take winners from our follow list. So this system here, now obviously this isn't all of it. This is the only piece that I hold on to until I'm done getting the whole thing plugged up. And I'll show that whole process here in just a little bit. The upside to doing something like this is you're gonna be losing weight, you're gonna be gaining reliability. This is the first thing I do is remove these off the cars. The other downside is you're gonna to have to reflash your computer. So one of the things that I talk about on this channel is all these little projects that all are gonna need your ECU reflashed. Your best case scenario is to get a plan in place. Okay, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this and they're all gonna to need to be reflashed to get rid of that code or whatever it is. Get all that put together and then do your tune all at once. Don't do one thing and then do another one and do another one. If you're modifying cars like this, you're gonna to wanna to tune anyways, so do everything all at once. And that's what we're doing here. There's gonna be a whole bunch of stuff on the inside of the car, like with the uh, cruise control and some of the pedal switches, a lot of the emissions, the, the gas tank, we're doing a fuel cell. There's gonna be a whole bunch of stuff that this car is not going to like but I'm going to make sure that we tune it all at once and then that way I take care of everything all at once and then we're not fighting it every couple months every time I do a modification. I go about this in a way that is basically free for me. Um, I did have some aluminum left over from a project we did a while back. In fact, it was the side skirts on my race car. This is the last piece of it that I've got left. What I have here is basically quarter inch aluminum. It doesn't need to be this thick, but you also wanna make sure it's not too thin because uh, you do want to make sure that it's not going to bow on us. And all I do is take this and this piece here and I'll draw up a design and then I'll cut it out and that's it. And then I put it back on the car. Um, sometimes you'll have to replace a gasket. Sometimes uh, the gasket that's on there, um, you can just crank it down real tight and then you don't have to worry about it again. The vacuum line that comes off the back of this piece here, uh, this is another point that has issues with reliability because they get old and cracked and stuff like that. So when you do pull this off, follow that vacuum line all the way to the back. I think it goes back of the intake manifold, pull it all the way off and then replace it. And all I did with my vacuum line was put a piece back on there about an inch long. And then I found a, a, a very small screw that was the same size as the vacuum line, ran that small screw in and then put a zip tie on it. There's many ways to plug vacuum lines. I know you can get caps for them as well, but I wanted to make sure that we were using zip ties or crimps to make sure that nothing's gonna come off. So I'm not driving down the road uh, later on and all of a sudden I've got vacuum leaks because I didn't quite get the vacuum line plugged off like I should have the first go around. So the rest of this, you just unplug, get rid of, um, take the harness that was plugged into it and just kind of tuck it. There's a box just in front of the passenger side in the engine bay and I just roll up the wire and just put it back in there. So the rest of the video goes as follows. I'm going to trace this. I'm going to cut this out, we're gonna smooth it up, and then I'm gonna bolt it onto the car, and uh, that's how we do it. This saves me about 15 to 20 bucks. I don't know how much aluminum costs anymore nowadays, but this was a, this was a big sheet of aluminum when I got it. I just had pieces left over, and uh, some of them we've been doing this with. I think this is gonna be like my fifth one I've made with this, and uh, other ones we've gone and shot to see how strong aluminum is and other stuff. But basically this, this is my last piece. I think I can get two more of these out of here and I'm probably just gonna cut both of those today because from what I can tell the E36 takes the same size of one. But yeah, I think I can get two or three more out of this piece of scrap aluminum. Again, that saves you about 15 to $20. Um, normally when I'm doing things, building things myself, if it, if it takes me too long and it's not saving that much money, I won't do it where this takes about 15 minutes to cut up and then I'll put on my belt sander and clean up the edges real quick. I can cut one of these out in about 15 minutes and it saves me about 15 bucks. 
So it's a pretty good return on investment and depending on who you buy them from, they can get upwards of like 20 to 25 bucks. So even if it was $15, you know, 15 minutes isn't really that long to get this set up and ready to go. So let's get this traced up and get it cut out. All right, and then here is the mostly finished product. I am gonna smooth it out just a little bit more, but that's basically it. Um, I was gonna to continue to cut the rest of these out, uh, but I don't normally cut this in the garage and it's making a big mess and it's like freezing cold outside. So I left them traced out, smoothed off the edges so I don't cut my finger again, and uh, I'm gonna put this back in my parts box. But yeah, so there we go. Um, I did start this with a 15 64th size hole, and then um, I bump it up to a quarter inch hole. And what that allows me to do is I can get the 15 64 and um, you can see some of these are just slightly oval shaped. Um, I'll get them close. Uh, I have gotten them close before to the point where I put that 15 64 and then it fit right on. But you'll get the 15 64 you'll get it on there and you'll see where it needs to be adjusted and then you'll bore them out just slightly bigger. And that's all there is to it. So yeah, I'm gonna smooth this up just a little bit more and we'll get it put on the car. So there we go, that's what it looks like all buttoned up. Uh, we made sure that the backside, the one facing the engine is the smoothest. The front, if you can get it to look nice, that's great. If not, it's kind of out of the way. Not very many people see it. This is a fairly simple process. If you buy one of these, it's literally just a plug and play, pull your old one off, put your new one on. If you're gonna cut one out, just like what I did, just trace the pattern off of the existing pieces, uh, drill a couple holes, and that's kind of it. It does take an angle grinder and maybe a belt sander, and if you have those items and you've got 15, 20 minutes on your hands, it's not a big deal and it's totally worth it. This is probably the sixth or seventh one of these that I've built. We did do one on our channel a while back where we built one out of a uh, sheet, like uh, steel. The reason we did that is because the scrap pieces of aluminum that I had, like the one I was showing earlier, we couldn't find it. And so we had it on the schedule to get that done and so we ended up building one out of steel. And you can do that, the problem is they start to rust and aluminum doesn't rust. And if you do one of these in steel, make sure you're using a rust reformer or a spray paint that'll keep the rust off that piece of steel as long as you can, because it can make a very big mess. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you are subscribed and following us on Instagram, Tenza underscore motorsports. We'll see everybody in the next video.